YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and yes, I am in Total War Rome 2. It has been quite some time since I've played Total War Rome 2 uh, on the channel. I've actually played it a little bit on my own uh, here and there, and as you all know, I think it was, it was a little over a month ago, probably about a month and a half ago, I held a vote on um, factions. This was right prior to me <coughs> going on two weeks of vacation. And um, the Seleucids won the faction votes, and then some people thought that I had given up and that I wasn't going to be doing a Rome 2 campaign. That's not true. I was just trying to finish the campaigns that I had going in Warhammer 2, which I have now done, thus freeing me the time and space in my channel to pursue this Rome 2 campaign. Now, by the way, if you'd like to skip ahead in the video to where the campaign actually begins, feel free to go ahead and do that. You're not going to upset me. But yes, there is going to be a few minutes of introduction in this campaign. And it's because I want to introduce the background of it for those who weren't familiar. Now, Seleucids won the vote, but it was based on a premise of, you know, basically like recreating Alexander, except we go west instead of east, um, because this uh, the Seleucids are a successor state. Now, I decided to spice this up just a little more and try and make this very interesting. Now, some of you may not know, uh, that after the Second Punic War, and I'm not going to put very specific dates and stuff in here because I don't have them all written down where I can get it, but you know, feel free to go Google it or Wikipedia or something. But after the Second Punic War, Hannibal was only 46 years old. So after the defeat at Zama, um, Carthage was forced to pay a giant war indemnity um, to Rome, which a lot of the people in Carthage thought was going to be impossible to pay or absolutely crushing. But Hannibal, being the genius that he was, even after having been defeated, was able to show Carthage and its council of elders uh, that they could pay this war indemnity. And so he he helped reform their finances. They were able to pay the war indemnity and they started becoming prosperous again. And of course, Rome, the ever jealous, ever upset because of how bad Hannibal kicked their booty, um, <laughs> with, with the exception of having the ability to siege Rome properly. Uh, they, they still were scared of him, very scared of him. And so they they started to kind of make overtures uh, against Carthage again, and so Hannibal fled Carthage because he was worried that Rome was going to come pressure them to turn him over or face a war. So he left and eventually made his way to Tyre, which was the home city of Carthage, the Phoenician home city, and uh, eventually made his way to um, the court of Antiochus. Antiochus, I don't know how you say that right. I'm going to say Antiochus for now. Um, so he was the Seleucid king. And uh, in his court, um, there are a lot of anecdotal stories about different things that Hannibal was said to have done. Eventually, Antiochus ended up at war with the Romans too. Um, and he did go give, eventually, Hannibal the, uh, the command to go build a fleet um, and to try and take that fleet and unite with the other Seleucid forces who were fighting in Greece against Rome. Um, this did not go well. In the end, Hannibal was not able to find any success, really. But of course, you know, he had been given the fleet, and there's a lot of stuff about this that I don't entirely understand. But anyway, I, I figured this would make a fun premise, so hear me out here. That little bit of historical insight was to say, we're saying Alexander goes west. A lot of people, when they look at ancient history, will rank the commanders of ancient history as Alexander being the greatest. That's usually the case. Um, and then, I mean, somewhere around second or third is either Hannibal or Caesar, and others, depending on how they rate them. And Hannibal's usually right up near the top. So I figured this would be fun because me being a Hannibal fan, it gives me a way to pull Hannibal into this and somehow still have a little bit of a tie to Carthage, but still maintain the Alexander Goes West. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing a Seleucid campaign and we are going to be pretending that Hannibal has joined the service of the Seleucids, um, as kind of did happen in history, except this time, rather than focusing on giving Hannibal control of a fleet, um, we're just going to assume that he's given command of one of the armies and that he has access to the professional armies of the Seleucids, which is something that Carthage never had. They always hired mercenaries and only had a few professional forces. So Hannibal never really had a proper professional army under his command. And, a, and he gave Rome a beating in their own backyard for 16 years without having a proper army. So... I've always wanted to imagine what it would be like if Hannibal had been com uh, given command of a proper army, such as that Alexander had, would he be able to create the same legacy? So I feel like this satisfies the premise of the campaign and also gives us a little bit of a fun historical sandbox to play in. Now, a couple things I'm going to say here. There is no mod, for instance, that will start this campaign after the defeat of Carthage, meaning that Rome, you know, 
has all that, but but technically Rome didn't completely control all the territory of Carthage immediately following the Second Punic War anyway. So Carthage is still going to be on the map. All right. So just so you all know that Carthage will still be on the map. We're just starting a grand campaign in 272 BC. So the timing's not going to match up according to the campaign and what we're stating here either. So we're using our imagination a little. Okay, folks. Um, so shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, I'm going to play on the very hard difficulty just to try and make things challenging. And also to ensure that we don't go to fight Rome and find like Rome with three settlements and basically being defeated by Gauls or worse yet, the Etruscans or something like that. I have put a mod on that is called Guaranteed Major Factions that basically gives a giant auto resolve like any any battle that takes place out of the sight of the player between a major faction and a minor faction. The major faction gets a huge bonus in the auto resolve, which basically ensures that the major factions win all the battles against the minor factions, thus guaranteeing that the major factions grow. Now, Air, what happens if two major factions face each other, like Roman Carthage? Well, there is no bonus at that point. Um, so there is some, you know, some risk that this could go awry. I hope not, but I've also used one other mod, which is called Proper Pikes. And basically, it just makes pikes fight a little better. I don't think it changes their stats, but it does add a special ability to them where you can kind of help push them forward a little more aggressively into a fight because pikes were always really bad about getting any kills in this game because they kind of just sit on their butt and don't really engage the enemy properly like they did in Rome 1. Um, so you had a lot of issues with pikes. So those are the only two mods that I'm using at current. And I got the, the um, major faction guaranteed mod as a suggestion from folks uh, in a post that I put up on my YouTube channel in the community. And thank you for all the help there. Now, one question people might have is, and I've had this question a lot of times, Air, why don't you just use DEI? Just use DEI, it's the best mod. DEI, DEI. I've heard about DEI about a million times, <laughs> and I appreciate it. I have played the DEI mod before. It is a good mod. However, the DEI mod um, changes the game so drastically and adds so many units and makes so many changes to battle pacing and statistics. Heck, it even renames all the units to stuff that I can't possibly pronounce. I like the DEI mod. I think it's good work. And were I to ever play a DEI campaign, I would need a considerable amount of time before playing it to even just go learn how to play the mod because it's not even the same game hardly by the time you use it. So that is why I'm not using the DEI mod. And a big reason in it is I don't like the battle pacing. Well, air, there's sub mods that makes the battles faster. I know, I used it once. I just don't want to mess with it right now. Um, so it is a good mod. I am aware of it. I think a lot of you probably enjoy it. And I'm not opposed to it. This I just I don't want it in this particular one because I want the game to look familiar and be understandable for people um, and understandable for me because I have not had time, nor do I have time to go properly learn how to play the DEI mod uh, before filming this campaign. So hopefully that answers some of the questions in the premise of the campaign. Of course, like I said, if you all didn't want to hear any of that, you could have skipped forward. I'll try and remember to put a you are the watermark there. Empire. Okay, so here we are on the campaign map. I'm going to go ahead and explain a couple of things here. One, I also did have one other mod that I put into effect, which was a um, four turn per year mod by Dresden that also adds the seasonal effects to the uh, the grand campaign map. I like this mod because one year for every turn just seems a little bit overkill. Um, so yeah, I've got the four turn per year mod as well. Uh, we've got um, our uh, leader here, Antiochus, uh, in a giant Indian elephant unit um, leading this army. And we're, Antiochus was part of the story I told you all loading into this one, so we're going to leave him there. So we're going to take this other army. And uh, appropriate enough, there's Indian armored elephants here too, and we're going to pretend that this is Hannibal. Um, I guess he brought his elephants with him, or got some, well, no, no, because he wouldn't have had Indian elephants. So he got him some new elephants when he got over here. He got the, the latest model. I cannot change the name of the general, and this is him here, Petrokles or whatever. We can just pretend maybe he's going by a code name, <laughs> but yeah, we, we can't rename him. If you all know a way to rename characters, let me know. I do know that we can rename armies. I'm going to call this army Hannibal's Revenge, and it is going to act as uh, the force supposedly that Antiochus gave Hannibal control of, you know, that we're kind of uh, pretending and having fun with here. I'm going to immediately take Hannibal's army out of Edessa. I'm going to move it over here closer to Antioch. I'm going to begin recruiting Levy Pikemen. Uh, we, need a, we need a phalanx in the middle of this army to help support it. 
Um, and right now we have the Kidri who are enemy to the south. No doubt we'll have this, um, the other successors on us soon with uh, the Egyptians just to our south as well. I'm going to take the remainder of the money that I have for this turn and uh, use it to just do some expansion. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put a, a farm in here, for instance. And if I have the money, yep, we'll go ahead and do a sacred grove here. And um, then we need to initiate some research. I'm going to start off by getting this organized supply done so we can get a better barracks and skirmisher camp. And we need to issue some edicts here. Uh, the first of which will be bread and gra uh, games at Antioch. And we do actually control all of Mesopotamia, even though this is because we have satrapies here. We can still issue an edict uh, from Edessa. So I'm going to come here, issue the edict. Uh, we have a lot of satrapies. These satrapies will no doubt be getting into wars and pulling us into wars. And they will also um, potentially betray us. So things should get interesting, to say the least. <laughs> so let's see what happens on turn number one. Yep, so Pergamon. The uh, ever underdog has declared war on our satrapy of Sardes, so we're going to end up on the side of our ally. Hidden agent was exposed. Oh no. Alright, so I don't see any troops at Jerusalem. Let's take a quick look at Petra. It's controlled by the Nabatea. We don't see much there. Let's go down and take a look at what the Egyptians are up to. I'm going to move down into their territory, get a little intel. A little bit of intel. Let's get this army... Let's get them some more help here. Wow, these javelin men are so bad. Oh, never mind. I thought their missile damage stayed the same as the slingers. I was looking at the wrong... I was used to seeing missile damage on the bottom of unit cards. I was like, wow, that's terrible. Um, Eastern slingers aren't bad and can cause damage to you know, units that aren't well shielded and they're decent against other skirmishers too. They have 23... Uh, missile damage. The javelins are going to be better against like cavalry or like getting an outflanking maneuver. I'm not going to recruit any more javelins, but I am going to snag, um, let's call it one more phalanx unit and one more hillman. I might grab a mercenary cavalry along the way, but I think that'll be fine for Hannibal's army. That'll give him some decent capability uh, early in this game. Uh, and I want to take the rest of my money and I'm just going to spend it trying to improve uh, these settlements that I have. Like this place is going to need some public order help. So let's do that. Uh, Tarsus, we can probably improve here too. Go ahead and put in a consecrated ground there as well. So let's go ahead and end the turn. Prepare your tomb. Ah, Egypt. Pharaoh, Egypt going for the gold lion. right off the bat. The and that's gonna it's gonna pull in Cyprus. Some of my allies pulled out, which some of them may have been satrapies. Like I want to say Parteva and other people were satrapies potentially. Pergamon has already offered me big of money for peace, reached. so sure. Take it. Thanks for the cash. Appreciate the contribution. Now this is interesting. Um, they sent an army after my fleet, which was pretty foolhardy. Um, I'm going to fight this just to kind of refamiliarize myself with fleet battles. Um, it's been a long time, <laughs> uh, but I know that transport ships if they can board without getting rammed to death, we'll do decent. But um, they can't stand up to a lot of ramming, if I remember right. So this ought to be entertaining, to say the least. Alright. <laughs> Guy's giving the speech here. <laughs> what say you? Well, apparently our general is planning to piss in their wine. That's pretty disgusting, I have to admit. But uh, apparently our general's got got some style there. I'm gonna go ahead and get into ramming mode and begin the ramification. Increase the ship speed for 10 strokes. Ships waiting. Set oars. I remember right, ramming was a, yep, a very effective way at ridding ourselves of the enemy. So I'm gonna go with ramming speed. There we go, so two other ships are down. Yeah, ramming is quite effective against transport ships. They just don't have the hull strength. Take it. 
These guys are already in there. Ram them! Ramming speed! Somehow that didn't kill their general. Sometimes you have to give them multiple quicks for it to re-ram. There we go. Yeah. Good old ramming. Nothing beats that. <laughs> oh, man. I really do wish naval battles had been brought properly to Warhammer. I can't imagine how fun it would be seeing, like, orcs. Like, just savagely ramming into enemy ships. Oh, man, that'd be great. Anyway, but I'm, you know, the naval battles in this game were never spectacular, but they were okay. Like, they weren't as good as Napoleon or Empire, for sure, but it's a nice touch to have it in the game. It's definitely a nice touch. I'm going to do all the release the captives, um, just so we can get extra cash. I need else? the money. Not aware of any real big downsides to doing that at the moment. So, this is going to open up a couple of opportunities for us. I'm going to send Hannibal against Egypt, since his army is better equipped at the moment. Uh, in fact, I'm going to force march him down here. I wonder if the Kidri would be willing to take a peace treaty. Because I really want to fight them right now. Foreigner? Excellent. All right. I so now I don't have to worry about getting invaded by Kidri. And Hannibal can go south uh, towards Jerusalem. And then I need to take out... Um, I'm going to go blockade this port so they can't send an army after me from it. Just going to maintain a blockade for now. And then at Edessa, we're going to have a rebellion over there eventually, which is unfortunate. Unfortunate. Need to move over here and get C day. See, though, we could start with Salamis. I don't see any enemy fleets around here. Let's just go ahead and march this way. Um, I like to have a few more troops in this army, so let's go ahead and recruit some units. We get a couple more phalanx units, a little bit more hillman support for the flanks, and another eastern slinger to help deck out Antiochus's army. Um, we pay in a decent bit of upkeep, so we'll want to continue our efforts at getting some extra cash. We could probably do this by putting a harbor in here, and then let's upgrade this snail vats. A little more income from industry and stuff. Building our temples. Uh, we're not researching any tech, and we have a character skill for our admiral out here. And uh, make him a better admiral by going through the commander tree. Let's do that. And let's see. Heck. I'm going to go ahead and do some work at improving our chances at siege. This will give us access to towers and takes away enemy holdout time. And then we take less attrition when sieging. I'm going to go ahead and prepare that because we're likely to be sieging a fair bit in this campaign since we're going to have to take a lot of settlements. Okay, so there's an Egyptian army moving towards Jerusalem. Hannibal might have his first opponents there. All right. This person has risen to power. Important character. Well, apparently... None shall pass. We win this battle? No, probably not. Let's uh, just maintain Holding the blockade here. Um, yes. We didn't have quite enough... Recruitment room, so that's fine. I don't want to recruit anything additional at the moment. Yeah, Sardes is going to do our work for us. Excellent. I mean, I would rather control this personally, but I mean, if Sardes is going to do it for us, they're a satrapy, so let's see if they will take care of business for us so that I can go ahead and go hit Salamis. Alright, so there we go. We've come ashore. We're going to hit Salamis. With Hannibal, I'm going to... Oof. I don't know. I don't want to raid. Um, normal stance. Let's push forward to this bridge. Approaching Egyptian territory. We're going to have some rebellion back here. It's going to be a real pain in the butt. I don't know if I want to spend any more 
Ash there. I think, though, that we can hit Salamis and then come back and take care of Edessa with this army. Let's attempt that. That new stuff building. We really need income. 1260 wealth. Getting more income. Let's, let's see here. So this gives extra 50 wealth and more glasswares to trade. Choose that option. This would unlock camel spearmen, citizen cav, Persian hoplites, and pikemen. Wouldn't hurt. Have access to that. Let's go ahead and do some herding grounds here, though, because that gives us some extra wealth, too. We need to build up some cash. We might want to look and see if anybody's willing to trade with us. Okay, here comes Parthia. It's not ideal, because we'll have a war on too many fronts. So we need to shut down this war. Sarda has just lost one of their settlements. Rhodos is going to attack? Okay, great. Well, Sardes is going to have their hands full. But they took Cide from Cyprus, and I'm about to take Salamis from Cyprus. Apparently, though, I don't get to move more than three inches on that turn in, so that's a little bit disappointing and frustrating. I have Atea sitting on my border. I don't know what that's all about. I'm going to move towards Jerusalem and see if we can put an end to this war with Egypt rather quickly, because ain't nobody got time for this. I'm going to see if that other army's already arrived at Jerusalem. It's still on the road. It has arrived. Okay. Not a very good army. They have some Egyptian pikemen. They do have their pharaoh here with Miss Ptolemy II, and he is uh, in a Hellenic Royal Guard unit. Interesting. All right. Let's see if there are any interesting... Not a lot of money to grab mercenaries with right now, so we're just going to make do with what we got. I've got some uh, heavy elephants and stuff, which should provide us some good help. Let's go ahead and end the turn here. Um, they attacked me, and I get reinforcements, so I'm just going to auto-resolve this. Either that or the time ran out, and we just invaded. I have no idea what this is. Let's uh, do the aggressive stance, so it looks pretty good for us. We should take this settlement off of Cyprus. Leave them hurt. Occupy. The Egyptians are going to attack me and pull in their reinforcements, including their garrison. This army grew in size, so they must have been re recruiting on the last turn. But it's mostly just a lot of Egyptian infantry. And if I stay away from the Javelins, my elephants can really wreak havoc on this army. So let's go ahead and fight this. Try and get Hannibal an early victory here, maybe take control of Jerusalem. If we can dissuade Egypt from this fight quickly, that'd be kind of helpful. As it's going to take a lot of effort to actually fully defeat Egypt. Alright, so let's take a look-see here. Their initial deployment, I think, is just a cavalry unit they've sent out after me. Guard mode. Some more hillmen on this flank. I put my general on my right flank, and I need to be careful with them. We need him. I, it's make believe Hannibal, so I understand if we lose him, it wasn't a character named Hannibal. But if we lose him, we lose the abilities that general has picked up uh, as a result of winning. Enemy reinforcements approaching. Enemy reinforcements on the way. Probably from behind, based on what I saw. Tempted to rush up and take this hill. I'm gonna try it. Unless I all of a sudden need to pull back. This hill would provide me a pretty confident position to operate from. A little. Let's fall back. Repositioned.
Okay. But not as great as what I had hoped to gain. But I think we have a decent position nonetheless. Right here on the flank of the Egyptians now. Egyptian cavalry unit over here. Uh, let my slingers do some work. Okay, I've gone into a pike formation. Got some cavalry support over here. Now the AI is kind of getting pulled into kind of a bad engagement with me. That's what I think is a bad engagement. I'm going to start peppering their pikemen with slingers. Use this, uh, this is the special ability that comes with that pike mod I mentioned. It just kind of helps your units thrust forward a little and make sure they're fully engaged against an enemy. It's some damage to that pike unit, not a lot. Start targeting some of these slingers. I'm gonna wait for the enemy to get a little more engaged. Egyptian infantry taking on my hillmen. It's a, a lightweight bout over there. That Helenar Ptolemaic Cavalry worries me a bit over here. That is a powerful unit. I'm gonna take these Javelins off fire at will. They don't have much ammo left, but I'm gonna run them over here to help throw some into that Ptolemaic Cavalry should it attack me. No, 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 no. Make sure these guys are engaged. Let's inspire some of these troops. All right, we took out some of their Slingers. We won the engagement against their cavalry over here, but that was some very weak cavalry. Now we have a Ptolemaic cavalry bearing down on us. But we are piecemeal winning this engagement so far. But this is a bit of a problem right now. Pull Hannibal this direction. I'm gonna try and intercept that Ptolemaic cavalry before it can charge. Okay, let's leave it alone. Back up the hill, let's wait for reinforcements. I mean, so far our pike front is holding, and it is working. So I'm gonna maintain current plan. I'm gonna actually start targeting these Egyptian slingers because they're hitting my hillmen here and I don't really like that. I'll throw a few javelins into that Ptolemaic cavalry, see if we can soften them up a bit. I'm gonna come in here with my general, so now let's cease the javelins. Okay, so the enemy's still blobbed up on us right here in the middle, which I will gladly take. Our general is under attack. Yes, he is. I'm feeling pretty confident. His abilities here. Yeah, the Ptolemaic cavalry is now getting stomped. We have an opportunity to take out an enemy commander here. Let's target some more Egyptian slingers. I'm gonna hold this flank back a little because I need to hold it while we have our armored elephants helping us stomp this Ptolemaic cavalry. Inspire my elephant unit, see if we can get some extra damage done. The enemy general is dead. That is some good news right there. As long as we can stay away from javelins with our elephant unit, we'll be in pretty excellent shape. All right, there we go. I'm going to pull my elephants back and rest them a bit. The enemy is just basically feeding me kills at the moment, and I'm happy to take them. I'm going to actually go ahead and start targeting that Hellenic Royal Guard with my slingers. That is a dangerous unit. Though it does leave me open to their slingers as well, which is bit of a, a dicey proposition. Okay, 
No, 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 no. Slingers. Easy with the fire at will. In fact, you're not even on fire at will, so easy. Alright, I'm gonna start attacking Ptolemy the second here. This is their Pharaoh in a Hellenic Royal Guard unit. This unit will be better shielded than most pike units, but um, a long-term peppering from slingers ought to be fairly unpleasant. For some reason, their own Egyptian slingers haven't fired back very effectively. Yeah, there they go, and now they're firing. I expect to take some damage from them, because our pikes are pretty weak. Oh yeah, we're doing some nice damage to that Hellenic Royal Guard. So I'm gonna let them continue to do so. The enemy general is oh wow, dead. yeah. Their Pharaoh just died. That is going to be a blow to morale, if ever there were a blow to morale. I'm gonna move forward. Or no, no, nope, they're coming to me. We're gonna hold position. All right, let's get set up. So I'm gonna start taking out slingers again. And I'm gonna move up over here. I need to get my general into position. Still resting off some of the previous fighting. But we're gonna have to go ahead and move it. Yeah, so the AI is just stuck in kind of a perpetual reformation here. This is something that Rome 2 suffered from. The AI just cannot make decisions very well, as you've seen. But hey, it works out fine for me. One of our units has used all its ammunition. All right, so the Slingers have done an excellent job here. They've gotten a ton of kills. Here comes the fight that we were looking for. I can now outflank over here with the Hillmen. Let's keep our general back, because they may try some cheeky javelin tosses at me. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Remember, everybody and their dog has javelins in this game. Nice tosses there on the flank. Let's bring our general around and let's see if we can start mopping up some of this mess on the flank. We have to watch out for pikes changing their direction because the AI can, generally speaking, get their pikes to cooperate much better than you can. Whereas the player will typically suffer a lot of issues trying to position their pikes properly. The AI is not always so disadvantaged. Alright, so I'm going to wrap up that flank. Things are looking good for me. The morale is faltering for the Egyptians, and I think a couple of well-placed charges here ought to finish. Yep. There is a massive break in the Egyptian army. going to pursue Egyptian forces where I can. Try and cause some excess damage before they get back to the safety of their settlement. Alright, so Hannibal's elephant unit has really racked up some kills here. 331 to be specific. Let's get that light cavalry unit. All right, well, that is some that is some good news right here. We've caused some pretty tremendous damage. I'm going to fast forward for a minute, let our troops go on the hunt. Looks like we can't quite catch all of the enemy units here, unfortunately. But I'm going to cause, like I said, I want to cause all the damage that I can cause at the moment. Help chevron my units, and then should make it less units, we have to kill in the city, so now we can quit the battle, so I'd say that was a pretty good epic opener for Hannibal, outnumbered, able to uh, use better positioning, superior skirmishing, and uh, used his phalanx better here, and then the decisive blow from the flank against the enemy Ptolemaic cavalry, and us killing the Hellenic royal guard general, so Pharaoh dies early. So Hannibal defeats Pharaoh. I pick up some much needed cash too because our coffers are going to be a little bit empty from all this war and all the troops. So we'll take everything we can get. It is a simple gift. This is also good. Um, we'll take this peace treaty and all that extra cash from Rhodes because I don't really need to fight Rhodes right now. 
Excellent. Good news indeed. Uh, our map got flipped upside down. And it looks like... Yep. Um, our Satrapi Sardes managed to squelch the rest of um, the uh, Cypriots here. The public of games get there. So this give us an opportunity to get some more territory. Jerusalem should now fall into the hands of Hannibal. And their uh, remaining defenses will be meager. So in the very first episode, Hannibal kills the Pharaoh and helps to really solidify his boss, Antiochus, as the true successor by getting rid of Ptolemy II. So, um... There we go. So Hannibal already making his impact in our fun history here. <laughs> our own version of history, should we say. Let's take a look at diplomacy real quick. I wonder if some of these people would be open to a trade agreement. Enjoy the pleasures of my home. Let's help us make a little extra cash. Welcome. The day is already old and there is much to do. Sardes doesn't want to trade with us? What the heck? Well, I guess our satrapies aren't always happy with us, though, huh? Our satrapies are going to have this little chain thing going on here. Be welcome here and speak as you wish. Trying to find people who might take Come. me up on a trade agreement. Speak. It'll help I'll with relations, and it'll also help me get some extra money. It's kind of funny, Sardes. I give you welcome. Let Zeus oh, here we go. I must accept. You must accept. I like that attitude. Yes, you must. Yes, you must. Um. I greet you in my master's field. There we go. I got some trade agreements open. When two That's going to help us considerably because we have quite a few trade goods. Friends. All ah, they slit each other's throats. Yeah, we have quite a few trade goods. Improve to a polis here. Improve to a civil settlement here. Let's do another cattle herd to, to help out with some extra food. We've got plenty of food. I, I really want the income, I think, from the cattle herding more than I do anything else. Arsis is a little bit ugly looking. Yeah, Odessa's about to have a rebellion. I'm going to put in with this fleet, and then I'm going to take the fleet real hard back towards Antioch. And let's see here. Triton. can improve the commander skill, but we can go ahead and add this admiral skill, and then we can start improving them once their level gets high enough. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this to the Edible uh, Marines. All right, so we've improved that army. I think we've got a solid start to our campaign here. I'll be continuing it, and uh, make sure if you enjoy it to leave a thumbs up. If you think there's other people who might enjoy watching the campaign, tell them that uh, air's back in Rome too, and uh, let's let's uh, get things moving. So be happy to have you all here. Hope you enjoyed the first episode of our Alexander Goes West, in this case Hannibal, kind of attempting to see if he can match the legacy of Alexander, since he was considered by most to probably be number two in terms of uh, overall commanders from ancient history. So there's another Egyptian army making its way this way. The defenders of the Nile, uh, they've got a general, but I'm not terribly concerned about him. We're looking like we're in pretty good shape here. Going to be Air of Carthage signing up for now. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see you soon with some more action from the Seleucid Empire, which is busy reforging the greatness of Alexander under Hannibal uh, and Antiochus. So hope you all enjoyed it. See you soon.